Yo, what is up guys, Duke DC here. Welcome to another video. I am so excited to be out here. It is a beautiful, gorgeous Saturday morning. I am in Hagerstown, Maryland at Twig Cycles. That is the dealership literally right there. I came down here so that I could do my little thing without interrupting their business because it is a great business. If you guys are looking for a Kawasaki, a Honda, a Suzuki, I believe they sell Indian motorcycles as well, hit up Twig Cycles. Link in the description down below in Hagerstown, Maryland. Uh, my boy Chad hooked it up. I am out here on this beautiful 2018 Kawasaki Ninja 400. But before I jump into this, I want to thank the sponsor for this video today, Rollick Outdoors. I've been working with Rollick Outdoors for a couple weeks now on articles and kind of motorcycle consulting and really figuring out where I fit in their company. And the first thing that I can say is that it is truly an amazing team. Uh, Rollick is a new website that helps connect consumers, like me and you, uh, with certified dealerships to get the best pricing, uh, inclusive deals, different specials, and really be a one-stop shop for motorcycle buying, for ATV buying, for anything that's a recreational, like a side-by-side. -side. Uh, they work with all sorts of different dealerships around the country, and they basically work to help you, the consumer, buy your dream bike, whether it be this beautiful 2018 Ninja 400 or something else. Uh, so for more information, please go to gorolic.com. It's going to be the first link in the description down below. And when you click that, it will take you to their site, and it'll show you kind of how to walk Walk through and find your dream bike. I personally love Rollick because they are the reason that I get to ride more beautiful bikes like this and work with even more amazing dealerships like Twig Cycles. So check them out in the description down below. Let's go for a ride. Let's just go for a ride. She's peppy. Oh, breaks her. Now, I'm riding the bike. You guys have seen the walk around. You've heard my spiel about it. Let me tell you what I feel. How I feel riding it. How does the bike actually feel? So, um, the clutch, everything is incredibly light. Like, uh, the bike itself, the 366 pound curb weight is incredibly light and it feels it. The clutch is light. Uh, the only thing that I, I initially off the bat don't like is the brake feel. I think that the brake feel is lacking a little bit. And you know, I went initially to slow the bike down and I was coming out of the dealership and it took a lot more force than I'm used to. Now, of course, I ride a S1000R with Brembos that are actually pretty bitey. So I think I'm more used to the bitey brake. For a beginner, this would actually be a positive because you don't want that crazy bite on your brakes or else you're gonna like, you know, possibly endo it or, you know, just lock up the front potentially. If you have ABS, which this bike does have, you're still not gonna have a great time. <laughs> So maybe that's good, you know? Everything about this initially just screams, uh, screams easy. The gearing is really, really nice. Uh, it's a six-speed transmission, as I said. It's got uh, the 399cc parallel twin that's putting out 28 pound-feet of torque and 44 horsepower. Uh, I went to Fueli this morning just to see what owners are getting as average mileage you know, on this bike. They're getting about 55 miles per gallon, which is incredibly good. I think it's got you know, probably like a three-ish gallon gas tank, so you know, well over 100 miles. Uh, closer to 150 miles, which is great if you consider, you know, I had a Tuono that would get like 80 miles before the light would come blisteringly on and slow me down. The controls are easy uh, to navigate. The only thing I don't like is on this side, the turn signal is a little high and the horn is also, everything's a little high and up like that. I wish that things were a little bit adjusted this way. I went to go cancel the turn signal. And I hit the horn coming out of the dealership and that's because I just wasn't used to its position. There is a little bit of buzz in the handlebars. I'm at 5,000 RPM, 40 miles per hour. And I feel it a bit 
you know, mind you, I go up to fifth gear and that's completely gone. So that just might be a, a testament of the gearing. But I also think if you were riding this bike at 70 plus miles per hour for long distances, even in sixth gear, above 6,500 RPM, you would start feeling some kind of numbing of your hands, which is not great. The 17 pound weight savings is just blowing my mind. Now, mind you, I've never ridden the Ninja 300, but to save 17 pounds on any bike from year to year, and to increase the displacement and add more features and technology and like nicer equipment, it, that's, it's mind blowing to me. The, the shorter wheelbase, the lighter weight, I mean, the bike feels incredibly nimble. 366 pounds is very, very light for a beginner. Uh, I don't feel like I'm too hunched forward. I've got a nice upright riding position. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, the mirrors are good. The visibility on each one is uh, plentiful. They're actually massive mirrors, so you do have a lot of visibility out of them. When it's set up correctly, you shouldn't have to turn your head for much, although you should always check your blind spots quick. Whoop. Very quick. <laughs> The instrument cluster, incredibly easy to read. I have my gear indicator in the center next to the tack, which is worth its weight in gold for a beginner. This genuinely is, in my personal opinion. Power delivery is really, really smooth, really linear. You know, it feels like it's got a good amount of torque down low to get you off the line, uh, but it's not overwhelming, so that if you accidentally did like that in a lower gear, you probably are not gonna go anywhere. I'm so incredibly lost and I love it. I love every minute of this. There we go. So in the sun, it is really easy to read. And now I can see that I have a fuel gauge, full tank of gas. I have the speedometer. I've got a uh, clock and I have a temperature for the oil. All good things that make me happy. I did want to bring something up to you guys though. Uh, and see if you like it. So this is the beginning of what I would like to call a beginner bike series. So I get a ton of questions about what should my first bike be, what should my first bike be? And I'd love to answer them, but I hadn't been given a ton of opportunity in the past to ride new entry level bikes like this. Now I am. So what I'd love to do is ride a few of these, have you guys vote on which ones that you loved the video of the most, like which bike you enjoyed the most, and then potentially, I don't want to promise it, but potentially do a best beginner bike shootout video with two of my friends who are beginner riders. Uh, they can give their genuine opinions, their questions, their comments, their concerns about motorcycles in general, and then me being like a, a more seasoned rider who's been on you know the fastest of the fast can give my two cents on whether this is a bike that you know genuinely you could grow out of or if it's something that you're going to be able to have for a really long time. Oh, I'm so lost. I was not supposed to go this way. Well, that was easy. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be on a Japanese sport bike. I know if you've been watching this channel for three years, you know that I've had such a difficult time getting on Japanese sport bikes. So huge shout out to Twig Cycles again in Hagerstown, Maryland. It'll be linked in the description down below if you guys wanna check them out. Uh, I'm working with Chad today. He's amazing, just cool dude who is letting me take out these bikes that I've never been able to ride before. What more can you ask for? Twig Cycles, right there. Boom, look at that, it's like a commercial. Damn, actually this thing really gets up and goes. I, that was at 7,500 RPM, because again, this is a brand new bike and I'm not trying to redline it in the slightest. Uh, and that pulls, and this thing redlines at 11, at 12, at 12,000 RPM you could take this up to. So it actually has a lot more power than what I am currently using on it. I'm definitely just putting around in this. That's an impressive pull when I'm, in, I'm just like halfway through the rev range. Uh, what else should I talk about? The comfort, the comfort of the seat and the riding position in general. Again, I'm 5'9", 30 inch inseam. I feel perfectly fine. My legs are nicely bent at the knee. It's not overly bent, although I will admit I have rather short legs. And if I was six foot 
this would probably be a bit uncomfortable, especially if a lot of that height was in my legs. My torso feels good. I do have a long torso, so that gives me the opportunity to tell you that, you know, I'm not too much of a sail. I don't feel like I'm in the wind too much. I don't feel like I'm too far away from the handlebars, uh, which are nice and upright, but they're not, they're not Tory. They're like appropriately upright. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. Like, I'm not reaching for these bars, but I'm also not sitting back like I would be on a, a GS or something like that. But let's talk about features. Because this is an entry-level bike, uh, this model with the ABS in particular costing $5,300, that's the MSRP, uh, we don't have a lot of the crazy features that you would get on something that's, you know, three, maybe four times more expensive. So there's no adjustable suspension up front. Uh, there's no rider modes. There is no cruise control. There's no heated grips. There's nothing like that. Some people are going to say that that's perfectly fine, uh, especially if you're paying $5,300 from the dealership for a brand new motorcycle. Some people are going to be like, well, you know, maybe I want those features and I'm willing to pay more or I'm willing to buy something that's used that may potentially have been, you know, abused in the past. That's completely up to you. I think for the price point, considering that Kawasaki took a $5,000 bike, which is what their base, this is five grand without ABS, right? Last year, the Ninja 300 was five grand without ABS. So they've taken this bike and they've increased the displacement and they've dropped the weight and they've improved the geometry and everything about it. And yet they did not increase the price. Like hats off to them because this is unheard of, okay? They're bringing the consumer a better product for the same value. Yeah. I just want to talk about a couple things that are really important to me and one of those is resale because this is a beginner bike and an entry level and at some point potentially you would outgrow that which is something that I think Kawasaki has actually worked on a lot because now that this has more power and uh, more usability for a longer period of time they've definitely extended the time period in which entry level riders are going to feel the need to potentially sell this to get a bigger motorcycle. But let's say that that time comes for you. I think that you have to buy the ABS model because anything that isn't ABS is just gonna take longer and longer to sell on the market that is filled with bikes that come standard with ABS. The fact that Kawasaki even offers this bike without it is an interesting point to me. Um, I think that it's good for purists who, ne who don't necessarily want it, but I think for the $300, it doesn't make sense if it's like from a money perspective. So if you don't get ABS because you wanna save 300 bucks, I don't think that's a smart idea. I think you should just penny up, pay the money, because it's gonna help you sell the bike in the end. Uh, and it's also just an incredibly important safety feature for new riders. It's better to need it, no, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. This is a great bike. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, if I had to give it a rating out of 10 for what it is, I think this is an eight out of 10. I think uh, there's a couple things that you just have to get used to, especially if you're used to you know full-size bikes with 1,000 cc, 100 plus horsepower. Uh, but at the end of the day, I love the position. I love the feedback. It's really, really, really nice. We're gonna take down this road for a little bit because I just wanna see what's what. Let's go explore. Okay, so while we have a second, I wanna talk about some things. So yeah, let's just do a quick post-ride walk around. First off, this is the special edition color. So uh, the orange and the gray and the black is special. I don't know if it costs more money for it, it might. So if it does, that $5,300 would probably go up like another 200 bucks, I'm not really sure. And I don't wanna give you guys false information. Um, we've got Nissan calipers on the front. Looks like they're two pots, one side rotor. It's got the ABS disc there so that you can see. Of course, it says ABS. We've got this honk of an exhaust with this little pipette of an outlet pipe, which is hilarious. Uh, I, I think it looks really good. It doesn't look like a beginner bike. In the showroom, they had this sat next to the 650. And from a styling perspective, they're almost identical. Uh, once you start looking at the engine and maybe, you know, some of the steering configuration, that's where you see the difference. But otherwise, it's a big boy bike with entry-level power and entry-level ergonomics. What more could you ask for? 
So you got these huge mirrors. You've got this like, I want to call it a baby Ninja H2 front nose because it's got that little beak that the H2 has, which by the way, Twig Cycles has an H2 SX sitting on their dealership floor and I was like pleading them to let me take it out for a spin, but um, that's a pretty special bike and I think that they only do it during Kawasaki demo days. I'm a huge fan. Um, I like the five-spoke wheels. I like the... Uh, I actually like this paint a lot. Of course, you would get a tail tidy. You would get a new exhaust. Possibly, possibly, like a double bubble windscreen that was tinted. That would look really, really good. Take off the sticker. Uh, maybe some smaller mirrors. And at that point, you've got a bike that's going to look killer. All right, guys, so final thoughts on the Ninja 400 before I bring it back to the dealership. Uh, I think it's a really good entry-level bike. I think for $5,300, uh, possibly a little bit more with this special paint, but $53 for the ABS edition, it's a great bike. You know, I, would, I generally tell beginners to go with three different things. First, lower the amount of money that you want to spend. Don't go out and buy a $10,000 bike as your first motorcycle. It's just not a smart idea because genuinely you might not even like riding, okay? So this is cheaper than that. The budget is really good. The insurance is going to be low because it's a 400. The weight is a big one. This thing only weighs 366 pounds. It feels incredibly lightweight. The seat height is nice and low. The ergonomics are comfortable. Those give you the, the comfort and the confidence to maneuver this thing in slow speed and of course in higher speed riding conditions. Um, the next thing is power. Don't go out and buy a, a thousand cc sport bike as your first motorcycle. It's just not smart because if you twist that wrist when you're not paying attention, that bike is going to get away from you and it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt the people around you. It's going to cost you a fortune. It's just not a good idea. This is a great beginner bike. It's got enough power to have fun on and grow into, but it doesn't have enough power to potentially hurt you, the people around you, and then end up costing you tens of thousands of dollars. The brakes take a little bit of getting used to uh, since they're not super bitey, uh, which is good because they're a bit more linear. The throttle response also linear with the power delivery. I wish that the signal, the controls on the left side were a little bit tilted down because I just feel like they're in a place where you're going to hit that horn when you try and cancel the turn signal. Uh, but otherwise, the styling, the power, everything, this is absolutely a buy in my book. And on that beautiful note, guys, I'm going to take it back to the dealership right there, pick up another bike, and head out for a spin. So remember what I asked you. Leave a comment down below if you want me to do a beginner bike shootout and start thinking about which videos are your favorite. I'm going to be taking out more of these bikes in the next few days and uploading those videos in the next few weeks. So stay tuned, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace!